Okay, welcome everybody. It's Tim Drummo, and this is Social <laughs> Selling TV. And today we have a very special guest, Cedric Crumbly, who, after 20 years of serving our country in the military, he is a free man as of what two weeks ago. Yeah, man. Welcome, Cedric. Hey, what's up, Ted? Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah. So, uh, people coming on the call, if they have questions, we can type them in the chat window, and we'll open it up for questions later. But Cedric, tell the story how we met and how we started working together. Well, I um, I got your book, uh, The Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn. That name of it. Yep. And um, I opened it up. And I didn't know anything about LinkedIn, and I uh, started reading through it, and you had some action steps, and I just started following the steps, and before I knew it, I started getting uh, results from LinkedIn, and I was like, holy smoke, this does work. <laughs> so that's when I uh, reached out to you on LinkedIn, and I told you what I was doing on LinkedIn, and I appreciate you for writing a book. Well, you responded, hey, thanks for reading my book. And you was like, by the way, you need to change your headline on your uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> so that's when I started changing my headline on my LinkedIn. And I did that and I came back and I said, hey, by the way, have you ever uh, done any mentor? And you said, yeah. And I said, well, would you be my mentor? And you, you agreed to be my mentor. And that's how we started working together. So that was about two years ago. Yeah. Let's just tell your story. I love your story about when you're, they told you you're a recruiter now. Oh my God. Yeah, that. Um, so I used to be a sergeant in the, uh, as a medic, I was with the uh, infantry as a medic and I learned leadership and um, being in the infantry really taught me a lot of lifelong uh, lessons um, being in that uh, combat unit. And I was, Enjoying my day, I learned how to lead my soldiers. Um, and I just really got my soldiers in sync and I, I built my own life. Um, where I just enjoyed what I was doing. I didn't want to do anything else, I was just loving it. And one day a guy comes up to me and he says, hey, congratulations. And I'm like, congratulations for what? He said, you are now an army recruiter. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I'm like. <laughs> How are you just going to tell me I'm going to be a recruiter? I didn't sign up to be a recruiter. And he's like, well, I said, well, what if I say I'm not going to do it? And he said, well, if you don't take the job, you got to get out the army. And I was like, well, that's messed up. I mean, I don't want to be, I'm not a salesman. I'm a soldier. <laughs> so um, I ended up going to talk to somebody and he said, you need to take that job. And I said, why in the world would I want to be a recruiter? He said, because you want to go into business and being a recruiter is going to teach you a lot of skills of uh, owning your own business and running your own business. A lot of things that the regular army, just being in the army, being a soldier isn't going to teach you. You need those skills. And so I looked up to him and I said, all right. So I went back to the guy and I said, all right, I'll do the job. I'll be a recruiter. Kicking and screaming. I did not want to do it. And um, I even, look, I tried to fail the recruiting course. Even though I agreed to go, I tried to fail the recruiting course. But because I didn't care, they make you do phone calls where you have to do a sales script. And I didn't care. So I was just, I mean, I made a lot of jokes on the phone. That's all I did. I just joked. And everybody was saying, you are natural. You are natural. You're a natural salesman. I said, no, I'm not, guy. I don't care. I'm trying to fail the course. Well, I was kicking butt in the course because uh, I didn't care. And, and I was relaxed. I wasn't trying to pass. And being relaxed, I just was Cedric Crumley. And uh, everybody said, you, you're you going to kill it when you get out there. You are a natural salesman. So, so you were cold so, calling and trying to get people to join the Army? Just Well, they have, back then, those days, you called the instructor, right? An instructor pretended to be an applicant. Oh, okay. But... And I was supposed to read a script, but I wasn't reading the script. I was just saying, uh, hey, Ted, what's up, man? How you doing? You know, and I made you relax and I just made a conversation. Well, come to find out now, years later, I know that's how you sell. You make people relax. I was doing it as a joke. I wasn't trying to sell. And um, I ended up going to my uh, recruiting station and that's when 
World War Three started. <laughs> so yeah. And tell tell me a story about the first woman that came in. Your boss went out to lunch or something. You were left alone. Yeah, so I think it was about five of us in the office and a boss, and they all were going to lunch, and I couldn't sell anybody to save my life. And this one young lady walked in, and I figured if somebody walks into a recruiting station, they want to join. I'm like, I can't mess this up. So she, she walks in, and she sits down to talk to me. I mean, and it is about five minutes. She gets up and just walks out the door and just leaves. And I'm dumbfounded. I'm thinking, what just happened? And I remember just staring at the door trying to figure out what, what did I say? And I, I, of course, when everybody comes back from lunch, I didn't tell them what just happened. And I remember going home that night and um, I called that young lady and I said, listen, I'm trying to learn this job. When you came into the recruiting station, you looked like you wanted to join, but you just got up and walked out. Can you, I said, I'm trying to learn. Can you tell me what I messed up on? And she just berated me. And she, she said, you are terrible. You are the worst recruiter I've ever seen. I went there and wanted to join the Army, but after talking to you, I don't even want to join anymore. I convinced her not, not to join. That's how bad I was. And I remember feeling, she just confirmed to me I could not do the job. And I just slid down the the, uh, in my apartment, I remember sliding to the floor and I told her, yeah, you're right. I told these people I can't sell. And she's like, you need a coach or something. And she basically hung up. And um, after that, I went to my boss and I told my boss, hey, listen, I can't sell. And my boss told me something that <laughs> made me into who I am today. My boss said, well, you ain't going nowhere <laughs> he said you either fly or you die and I was like are you serious and so I looked on his wall in his bookshelf he had Zig Ziglar's secret of closing deal and I asked him what is that he like what and I said what's that book secrets of closing the sale he said oh that's Zig Ziglar he writes a sales book and I said well can I read it he said yeah so I took that book home and I read that book cover to cover more than a few times. I didn't know professionals wrote, especially in sales, I didn't know there were books that teach you how to sell. I didn't know that you can just open up a book and learn how to do this. And Zig, thankfully, Zig's book is the first book I read because I learned about the different personalities of people. Yeah. And I just started applying this stuff and applying it. And then I, I developed my own methods, which I ended up writing in my own book. And things just, it was like an airplane. I slowly, you know, and I would crash and I go up again, I crash, I keep going. And I became a recruiting station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember, I didn't know this story until I read your book, which I'm holding here, Proven Sales <laughs> Secrets of <laughs> Recruiting Methods. <laughs> I didn't know all your peers were making fun of you. You yeah, they call me stupid. Yeah, stupid, idiot, moron, retard. I mean, stuff you're not supposed to say to people. <laughs> um, yeah, I was called every name in a book. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you got really sorry. depressed and you just. <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, I got to I got to tell you this. I got to talk about that book. So the first chapter. Is the original first chapter right remember you told me to introduce myself to Perry Marshall at this event yep. and I figured the best way and this was before the book got published to Perry Marshall was seeing him the first uh, chapter of, my, of the manuscript and so um, hold on Look like my connection messing up can you still hear me yeah can you hear me okay yeah. And so I figured the best way to introduce myself to Perry, because even Perry ended up messaging me. And he said, I want to hear your story. I'm thinking, OK, I got a story for you. And so I see him the first chapter of my book, uh, the manuscript. And it was basically saying, I'm one of the greatest salespeople walking. It's basically was the gist of the first chapter, the original first chapter. So Perry sends me a message back. He's like, huh, OK. You know what, Cedric? 
may I give you a little critique? I said, sure. And he said, um, it feels like you're not telling me your full story. You know, yeah, I get you're pretty good at sales, but I don't really feel it. And so I'm like, gotcha. So I went to a Starbucks and I took myself back 14 years to I was that scared little And as I'm typing the words out, what I felt and what I went through trying to commit suicide by driving through a bunch of red lights, I was literally shaking at this Starbucks as I was typing the words. And I even had to stop because it got too powerful. I almost broke down and cried as I wrote that first, rewrote that first chapter. And it was hard, man, to um, write that first chapter. And it was like I was battling right there in Starbucks out battling with myself to finish it and um, I ended up finishing the, the, the first chapter and I you know made sure it, it, everything was right the words were correct and everything and I sent it back to Perry and I waited for Perry's response and Perry's response is priceless I still got it he said that's what I'm talking about <laughs> he said that's how you write right yeah he's like bleed on the page man cut a vein and bleed that's what i'm talking about so that first chapter more people talk about that first chapter than anything else in the book and there's a reason for it it's written from a guy's perspective of how i really felt you know what i went through taking my seat belt off and running through driving through three red lights and then get hit uh not a scratch so and I couldn't even kill myself. So I couldn't sail. I couldn't kill myself. So I was like, well. <laughs> so you couldn't get tossed out of the army. You couldn't kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. So I might as well. Oh, yeah. And that's the decision I made. If I can't get out of this mess, I might as well get good at it. And um, I dedicated myself to studying every sales book I can get my hands on. I read everything from Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, a guy named Frank Beck. Becker, who wrote a book called How I Raised Myself from Faith to Success. And I read all those books. Then I discovered Jay Abraham, uh, Ken McCarthy, uh, Dan Kennedy, and I discovered marketing. I discovered that you don't have to walk up to people to drag them to you. There's a way that you can set things up to people come to you. You go yeah. from being a pest to a welcome guest. And I, man, I would spend eight hours studying, just immersing myself. I became a fiend. <laughs> and to yeah. this day, I still study. Uh, and, and when you do that, I mean, that's what, going on 14, 15 years now. So it's, I mean, it's, that's the best investment I ever made in myself. So, yeah. Yeah, you hit bottom and you just took off. You really went, immersed yourself in it till you got good. Yeah. Yeah. And today, things that's common to me when it comes to marketing and sales it's not common to other people because I'll say something that I think is everybody knows it. And I, I've now people invite me to lunch and they want to talk to me and uh, I'll say something. They immediately start writing things down. I'm thinking, I thought everybody knew that, but apparently not. So yeah. yeah. Don't tell them the marketer secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, and that's kind of my story. And, and, um, I don't know how deep you want to go and go with this. So. Well, you went after you started getting good at selling other recruiters, instead of making fun of you, they started coming up to you and asking you for advice. Yeah, they did. Um, so I got to the point where people started seeing my results and word spreads, man. Um, other recruiters would come to me and I had a recruiter tell me something. I was teaching a class on how to sell the secrets of selling. I was teaching it to recruiters and I was just explaining to them, anybody can sell. And one recruiter spoke up and he said, not everybody is Cedric Crumbly. And I said, well, Cedric Crumbly wasn't always Cedric Crumbly. So if I can do it, so can you, you just have to dedicate the time. And there are some people that was in that class that today are at the top of the game in recruiting. And I've gotten phone calls with people, I mean, they've passed me and they said, Crumbly, thank you, bro. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for you. And 
uh, let me tell you, there's nothing, there's no amount of money you can pay me that can beat that. Uh, to have people call you, and even the ones that pass me up, it's like, I'm out to help as many people as I can. Now I do it for a fee because I'm out of the army. I'm here. So, but any as many people that I can help, and I can if I can help you two x, seven x, ten x your results. I'm all about that. I just want to hear about it years down the road. And I've gotten those calls. I got to tell you about one. Uh, it's sort of sales. So, but this is very powerful, at least for me. I was at a Starbucks in Houston. And I was reading. I'm always reading or studying something. And I hear a young man behind me asking people to join his little uh, business opportunity. And he's getting closer and closer to me. And I'm thinking, okay, he's going to ask me to join his business opportunity. And so he comes up to me and he's nervous. And he, <laughs> it's like he's trying to work up the nerve to say something to me. And I said, hey, uh, what, what's your name? <laughs> he's telling me his name. And I said, uh, why don't you have a seat? He, he sits down and then um, I asked him how old he is. He's 17. And I said, what are you, what are you selling? And he tell me his business opportunity. And I said, would you mind if I give you some advice? Said, sure. And so I explained to him about going from being a pest to becoming a welcome guest. And I explained some concepts about building value in yourself. And I said, if you build value in yourself, you won't have to go to people people start coming to you and I'm explaining this to him and I asked him hey he heard of Think and Grow Rich he said no and I had a copy of Think and Grow Rich in my car and I asked him hey would you mind if I give you a copy of Think and Grow Rich he said sure so I gave him a copy of Think and Grow Rich and um, I told him about one of the things that helped me get to where I am is having mentors and he looked up at me he said would you be my mentor <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at the time, I didn't want to be anybody mentor. I was still trying to get better myself. And so as time went on, I would give him assignments um, and he would do the assignment. And slowly, things in his life started happening and getting better and better. And the guy's only 17 years old. He was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And it's because I moved to Kentucky and um, I got a text one day here and I said, well, I can't talk now because I'm at where I was telling him when I got off of work and he explained to me years old and he drives a BMW and he said, Mr. Crumbly, I just want to thank you. My life changed the day that I met you. He said, people ask me, how did I get the stuff I got? He said, all I know, I was at a Starbucks and I met this guy <laughs> and he changed my life. Dude, that. That's what it's all about. That. Hey, if you've got other applications all about. on your computer, so you may want to close your computer applications sometimes. Oh, okay. Is that what's going on with this? Sometimes. Deal? Yeah. You never know. Technology. Okay. But that's it. When, oh, what? when you get those rewards, get people say, you changed my life or you did something and they tell you that and you get a testimonial or they just call you up and thank you. It's just the greatest feeling. It is. I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. And now that I'm actually uh, retired, a lot of people ask me, uh, what am I going to do? Well, that is the ultimate goal of what I want to do. Coaching people and copywriting and mentoring and sales, yeah. whatever, marketing. Yeah. No, you were telling me all these stories and you, I said, you got to write a book about this story. And you're like, I never oh, wrote a yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and because you asked me, and you would give me, that's why I learned the assignments thing about being a mentor. You have to give people assignments. And I remember you would tell me, you would give me an assignment. One, one was I had to write 30 different ways that I can make money, and I would do it, and I would give it to you, I think, either the next day or the next couple of hours or something. 
<laughs> and so then you came back, hey, we'll write down 100 different ways. And I would do it, and I'd bring it back and give it back to you. Like said, I never had anybody do that before. And so um, that's what I learned. Then you asked me to tell you my story, and I told you my story. And you said, you need to write a book. I'm thinking, nobody wants to read a book about an Army recruiter, man. Nobody would buy it. You're like, no, you got a powerful story. People yeah. will read that book. And sure enough, you know, I get cosmetic dentists. Uh, there's a business owner that owns a supplement company. I mean, diverse people, business owners uh, have read that book. And a lot of recruiters have read that book. And I've gotten speaking engagements from that book. Matter of fact, just this morning, I received a message asking me to speak in Houston in March. And they said, bring copies of your book. So that book is amazing. So, yeah. Thank you, Ted. Yeah. Well, I was like, I said, you got to write this out. Do a rough outline. I gave you some assignments how to get started. Yeah. And it was yeah. like four weeks later, I had this manuscript in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. The Army, back when I started, we had a thing called be no do. There's no try. You do. Just right. do it. Just don't try. You didn't ask questions. You just yeah. went for it. Yeah. I gave you some feedback. We've got an editor. Yeah. You cranked that thing out, and it was just amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Yeah, and that's the thing. People ask me how long did it take me to write a book. I'm like, I think a month. And they're like, huh? So, I mean, I don't know. You just do it. You, if you just commit to doing it, it doesn't take too long. Yeah. Well, kind of recapping what I've seen from you, what makes you so special. You had, you were like down in the dumps. You were as low as you could get. You were trying to get yeah. kicked out of the army. They wouldn't kick you out. You couldn't fail. Yeah. You wanted to kill yourself. You couldn't kill yourself. Yeah. You changed your mindset. You said, I'm going to be really good at this. Yeah. So yeah. It started with the mindset. Yeah. And then you just didn't start reading a book and read a book every couple months. You totally immersed yourself in getting better. You had a hundred percent dedication in your life to get better. Yeah. And it's everything you do, you just go all in. Yeah. You said there's no trying. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna master this. And you don't give up. Right. Congratulations, man. That's just very few people have that. You are very special. I'm telling you. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I got um, this book in the mail. I was like, <laughs> I had tears in my eyes. I was like showing my oh. mind. This is <laughs> then I started reading it because I didn't read that first chapter. I read the manuscript version. Ah. So I'm thinking, gotcha. okay, yeah, this is okay. But Yeah, you can uh I, I give kudos to Perry for telling me, mm, you're not telling me the full story, buddy. So I went back and almost cried at a Starbucks where I wrote that uh rewrote that first chapter. Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you? What have you been thinking about doing up there? I know you want to mentor people, coach people. Yeah, I, um, I've gotten a soft spot for physicians and dentists. Um, I really want to help them with their practice. Um, I really do. And I'm doing research and I'm finding out what they're facing. And um, I have friends that are physicians. And I have a friend that's – I have a couple of friends that are dentists and cosmetic dentists. Um, and I think I can provide value. Um, so that's something that I'm digging in now to see how I can help them. Um, I'm always open for writing. I love writing. Like you had, you asked me to provide an article for your magazine. Uh, I had so much fun writing that thing, man. Uh, I love writing. Now, um, you mentioned about me dedicating myself. I started studying sales and marketing. And then I found out something called copywriting, right? My God, I love copywriting. Copywriting is simply salesmanship and print. So I love writing and I love selling. And you just merge that with copywriting. I love it. And it pays well too. So yeah. um, <laughs> I I like writing for myself. And uh, there are, I only want to work with select clients if I will write copywriting for them. So if there's someone who understands copywriting and understands the investment it takes to have somebody write copy for you, sure, 
if if it's in a niche that I understand, and if I don't understand that niche, if you understand that I need a couple months to understand your niche before I can write for it, then sure we can work a deal. Yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. So I'll open up uh, Steve and Daryl. Like you were the only two people here because I locked the meetings. I didn't realize it's going to just shove all these people, and I figured we might disappear as the speakers. But if you guys have questions, I can unmute you and bring you on video if you want. So go ahead and type in the chat if you want to. But I'm just, I've, after 20 years of serving our country here, you're on your own. Tell me, you, before we got on the call, you were saying you feel like a fish out of water. Yeah, I do. Uh, I've only been out a couple of weeks now. Uh, I'm on what they call terminal leave meaning it's your last vacation uh, in the Army. So 30 November, I am officially out. My, my vacation stops, and it's kind of like Uncle Sam's like, bye, buddy. But um, I'm signed out of my unit. I'm just on vacation now. And December 1st, I'll be officially retired. Like, done, done. Done, done. Yeah. So the other day, I was at a coffee shop, and um, I'm looking at all these people walking around. And it finally hit me. I'm no longer Sergeant Crumbly. I'm just plain old Cedric Crumbly. <laughs> I'm just, you know. Uh, but thankfully, because of you had me write that book, uh, my name is out there and people kind of know what I do. And there are some people uh, contacting me for, for different things. So definitely. All right. I highly recommend everybody connect with Cedric on <laughs> social media because he puts some really great stuff out there. Now, you, you mentioned that. Now, you, not only did you teach me about the book, I learned so much from you, Ted. I mean. Thank you. I learned something that's very powerful. And I don't know if people really get it. I, I was so nervous about the internet and connecting with people on the internet. And I asked you, hey, man, how does this stuff work? And you told me, just be yourself. I mean, you're not talking to robots. You're talking to human beings. The way that you would react if you were in a, a, a social place just act that way don't change who you are because you're on the internet well that's what i do and people have responded like crazy to that and i'm just being who i am i mean doctors dentists high level people i've connected with people that's worth millions um respond to me and give me feedback on different things you know so like you were making those joke calls, trying to get, trying to fail the course, you were being yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and that actually, that sales, just being yourself. People are looking for people who are authentic yeah. and that makes you unique. So well, yeah. Daryl has a question. So I'm going to unmute him here, bring him on board. Okay. Daryl, you have a question for Cedric. Okay. Ted, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, it's a wonderful story. No doubt about Thanks, Daryl. And um, I was very impressed and motivated by that. Are you going to, uh, Ted, are you recording this and going to put it out uh, available later? Yes, I am. Definitely. Okay. Very good. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. And I'm oh, enjoying okay. it much. We're on Facebook too right now, so it should be. Oh, very good. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, Cedric, this has been great. All right. And this is, you've got me motivated to get going again here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. No, because you always have to be learning. You always have to be sharpening our skills. Things are changing so fast. They are. But the human to human connection will never change. So if you focus on that and be yourself, whatever media is out there to get us our message out there, it's going to work. I'm using things today to connect with business owners that I was using back in 2002. And what's that? Only thing is, I don't know where I read it at, but I read somewhere that people are starving for appreciation. Ooh, yeah. That's all, that's the core of what I do. I just appreciate people. I just show them that I appreciate them. I will write you a letter, uh, I will send you a message if you do something that really 
touches me or connects with me, I will let you know that I appreciate that. The value that you gave in my life. So that's what I did in 2002. I did it back in 2002 just to make friends, but I ended up having a whole bunch of people <laughs> join. And I wasn't even trying to sell. I'm, and today I don't try to sell. I just show people I appreciate them. And that's my, if, if it's if any secret weapon that I have, that's my secret weapon. And I I've received it. a few of your letters and <laughs> no, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. That makes me feel so yeah. good. So. There you go. Definitely. Here is Cedric's book. Proven sales and recruiting methods. I love it. An army recruiter's guide to selling anything to anyone. And it's so true. Yeah. It's, a, it's not a big book, but it's a powerful book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cedric, and thanks, Daryl and Steve, who are on here, and the rest of you that are on Facebook Live. And Cedric, how do we get a hold of you? You know, the best way is to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, just type in Cedric Crumley and, and with me on Twitter. Um, yeah, and then I also have a website that I'm still working on, but it's CedricCrumley.com. Cool. I'll and buy my the book. Show notes and yeah, we'll get the reading. book. And you, there's a fax number in my book that you can connect with me from that fax number. So. A fax number. Wow, that is 2002. That's right, man. It still <laughs> works. Yeah, if fax still work, man. I prefer fax because people take time to fax stuff. I guess I get that from Dan Kennedy, but yeah. No, that's an important fact that things that worked in 2002 work even better now, probably because of all the other noise. Yep. Oh, I just gave away your big secret. It's all right. <laughs> cool. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, thanks, Cedric. And we'll be talking soon. All right, Ted. Take care. Thanks, brother. everybody. We'll talk soon. All right.